Itachi Uchiha being a double agent was one of the hugest reveals in the Naruto series when Obito, then pretending to be Madara Uchiha, told this to Sasuke Uchiha in Naruto Volume 43. I remember for me personally, reading this chapter while waiting for class to start made me wonder what would have happened if Itachi's secret had been found out by the other members of the Akatsuki. The question never really left my mind, even now after Naruto's been done for over five years. In my video about Kisame's warning to Itachi, I told you guys that if the video hit 3,000 likes, then I make a what if based on Itachi being discovered as a spy. You guys smash the like button over 3,000 times, so I'm keeping good on my promise. In fact, I had to put off an entirely different what if about Itachi. I had to put that on hold because you guys hit the like button so fast, a lot faster than I was anticipating. As one final note before we get into the video, I do have to say this. My original goal was to have custom animation included in this what if, but my dude Joe, who does the cutscenes for my other what ifs, is taking a very much needed break, and he did just really well on his ASVAB test for the military. So, shout out to Joe the animator for the awesome animation he's done for me in the past and just for winning in life right now. And if you guys haven't already, make sure you subscribe to Joe the animator's channel. So, just how different would the Naruto story be if Akatsuki learned the truth about Itachi? Well, in today's video, we're going to take a look at just that scenario. In order for this to happen, we have to look at the Naruto timeline for a moment where this scenario could most likely happen. In my opinion, there are two moments where this could have likely happened. Scenario one is just before Itachi's confrontation with Orochimaru, and scenario two is during the flashback events that were revealed in the Akatsuki Hida novel, where Kisame warns Itachi not to betray the Akatsuki. In my opinion, the most likely scenario is scenario number two. In order for this to happen, we have to look further into the circumstances of what happens after Itachi is warned by Kisame to not betray Akatsuki and when Kisame questions Itachi's will when it comes to serving the Akatsuki. In a battle with Tracker Ninja from the Hidden Mist Village, Kisame, in a moment of what can be argued as arrogance, ends up being poisoned by one of the Tracker Ninjas, and Itachi is weakened due to using a Tsukiyomi earlier in the fight. After Itachi realizes that the two ninja are actually a pair of brothers, his thoughts immediately go towards Sasuke, and for a moment, he has to remind himself that he's actually different than Kisame, while admitting that Kisame killing his own comrades was very similar to what Itachi had to do when he had to wipe out the Uchiha clan. In the moments after the two brothers' lives are ended, there's a moment where Itachi is once again thinking about Sasuke, wondering if his final moments will be similar to the brother that Itachi just watched die. Once again, seeing the change in Itachi for the third time in less than two days, after they escaped the area with the poisonous beast, Kisame would then stop Itachi. Once again, he would remind Itachi of the story about sharks one day eating their own. Without any warning, Kisame would swing his sword Samihade at Itachi, who would immediately pull out his kunai to deflect the attack. Itachi would ask Kisame, what are you doing? To which Kisame would reply that he's been testing Itachi's will to serve the Akatsuki. He would point out that Itachi had been acting funny just before they attacked by the Tracker Ninja, and that he's continued to act strangely. He would tell Itachi that he's seen that look that was in Itachi's eyes when he confronted him in the cave. Staring at it was the same look that he saw right before he betrayed his own comrades in the Hidden Mist Village, which would have been the point in the novel where Itachi acknowledges that he can't gain intel about the Akatsuki unless he gains the trust from working on the inside, and that if he's doing so, he's doing it to protect Konoha. It's something Itachi has to tell himself as he's carrying out these evil deeds. Itachi would attempt to talk Kisame down, wishing to keep his cover intact. However, seeing Kisame fire off a water shark bomb jutsu, Itachi would then know that Kisame was being dead serious in his efforts. Because Kisame wasn't at quite 100%, even though Samihada had been used to heal a lot of Kisame's body, and Itachi would have recovered more of his stamina from the earlier battle the day before, Itachi would have a slight edge in terms of where both men start from a health standpoint. Also, because Itachi would be a fresh recruit in the Akatsuki, he would still be at his peak power, which I've already covered in my How Strong is Healthy Itachi video. In that video, I stated that Healthy Itachi was between KCM2 Naruto and EMS Sasuke. For why and how I came to that conclusion, I recommend watching that video. After Kisame's sword struck Itachi's body, Kisame would notice it was nothing but a flock of crows. Itachi would then attack from his blind side, hoping to place him under Genjutsu to end the fight immediately. However, due to Kisame knowing how Tsukiyomi works and Itachi revealing the weaknesses of the Jutsu, as stated earlier 
earlier in the Akatsuki Hiden novel, Kisame would be on guard to not look at Itachi's eyes, and he would be well aware of how Itachi said a non-Uchiha can break free of the Genjutsu. Instead, he would look at Itachi's hands and feet, which would be all Itachi would need in order to put him under a Genjutsu, similar to how Itachi did to Naruto in early part 2. Samihara would quickly send Chakra to Kisame, breaking the Genjutsu immediately. Kisame would then ramp things up, trying to block Itachi's field of vision by first firing off a major water style jutsu, to which Itachi would easily dodge, but then he would hide using the hidden mist jutsu, with the intention of performing the silent killing jutsu that the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist are famous for. Itachi would then activate his Mangekyo Sharingan, as both the mist spread around him and the water from Kisame's early attack pulled all around Itachi. Itachi would wait patiently for Kisame to strike, knowing that users of the silent killing jutsu like to attack their targets from behind. Just as Kisame moved to strike Itachi, Kisame's eyes would notice the reflection of Itachi's Mangekyo Sharingan just as he stepped in to strike the finishing blow. It would be then that Itachi would use the full power of the Mangekyo Sharingan on Kisame. Itachi would then present Kisame with a trauma so severe that his mind would eventually tell Kisame's body to kill itself. After Kisame fell to the ground, lifeless, Itachi would say openly that in order to protect Sasuke, in order to protect Konoha, that he would willingly become the shark that eats his own brethren. Unbeknownst to Itachi, Zetsu would be watching nearby. Itachi would know the best chance to cover up Kisame's death would be point out that the tracker ninja from the Hidden Mist Village had been the ones to kill him. He would plan to tell Pain, and if need be, the masked man that he believed to be Madara Uchiha, parts of the truth. And from there, he would tell the tale of how Kisame died, replacing how Itachi was the one who killed him, and instead telling the tale of how one of the tracker ninja managed to kill Kisame. Kisame. Ninjas die every day, especially rogue ninjas, so it isn't anything new. After Zetsu would tell Obito the truth about what happened to Kisame, Obito would be pressed with a very difficult decision. Itachi was still a new member, one he was credited with recruiting, and now his teammate was dead. Not only that, but he clearly revealed himself to be a major thorn in Obito's side, which is something that Obito was aware was a potential, as stated once again in volume 43 of the Naruto manga. If Zetsu gives this information in front of Pain, then Nagato is likely to want to have Itachi killed off as soon as possible in order to prevent his dream for the Akatsuki being tampered with by someone trying to sabotage it from the inside. In my opinion, Obito would weigh the cost of keeping Itachi in the Akatsuki and would come to the conclusion that it was a mistake to allow him to join. From the moment he joined, they lost two members of the Akatsuki, Orochimaru and now Kisame. If we count the anime filler continuity, Obito would see that Itachi's true end goal was was to bring down the Akatsuki from the inside. Given how much he needed Nagato, Obito would view Itachi as being expendable, Pain would agree with Obito's conclusion that Itachi is too dangerous, and a decision would be made to eliminate Itachi. Pain would have another meeting with the Akatsuki via the astral projection jutsu that is used by Nagato in order to conduct the meetings of the Akatsuki, where their thought waves are converted into chakra, and then is broadcast to one location where their illusionary bodies are formed. Itachi would stick to his plan of informing the Akatsuki of Kisame's death. Pain would follow Obito's orders to go along with what Itachi states and then to inform him that for the time being, he was to partner with Kakazu and whoever Kakazu's partner was at the time, who would not be Hidon since he didn't join the Akatsuki until closer to the events of part 2 of the series. Given the third Hokage would still be alive in this scenario and Itachi was still a fresh recruit, this would be years before Hidon would have joined the group, which to reach state I'm disregarding the anime filler where Itachi, Kakazu, and Konan recruited Hidon. Pain would dismiss the Akatsuki, telling them to wait for his further orders. After the Akatsuki are dismissed, Pain would once again use his jutsu, this time speaking only to Kakazu and his partner. He would tell them the situation with Itachi, and then proceed to tell Kakazu that he can take the bounty on Itachi's body after killing him. In the time afterwards, Itachi would go to the rendezvous point with Kakazu without knowing the truth behind the Akatsuki's intentions, but he would clearly be on guard, given he would find it suspicious that Obito hadn't confronted him about the death of Kisame yet. Itachi's first clue would be how the behavior would change in Kakazu's partner as they began their new mission. Upon seeing how Itachi reacted to his partner, Kakazu would do what we know is confirmed in the series, which is kill his partner for no real reason other than being annoyed by something that they did. 
Kakazu would tell him that anyone who could draw suspicion so quickly didn't deserve to be his partner, which would lead to Itachi fighting Kakazu. A battle between a healthy Itachi and Kakazu would be a really explosive one, with Kakazu at first having the edge until Itachi starts to use the powers of his Sharingan, like the Eye Insight's ability to predict movements. Eventually, Itachi would force Kakazu to use his other hearts, making them move autonomously while Itachi was fighting against Kakazu's main body. Itachi's speed with Jutsu execution and attack speed would be enough to pressure Kakazu, even with the usage of the multiple hearts. Given how clever Itachi is in battle, he would be able to surprise Kakazu more than once, just as Kakashi did during their battle. But given Itachi's extremely fast skill in breaking down the mechanics of a Jutsu and then finding its weakness, Itachi would be able to systematically take down each of the hearts that Kakazu possessed. If they combined their attacks, he could progress to the Mangekyo Sharingan and use Susano and whip out his Yadamir in order to reflect the ninjutsu attacks. Given Naruto's simple shadow clone diversion tactics were enough to fool Kakazu in their battle, Itachi, using a combination of crows and genjutsu, would have Kakazu's head spinning around in circles, all while he destroys each of Kakazu's masks, which by extension destroys each of Kakazu's hearts. After humiliating Kakazu in battle, which again would be possible since this would be a very healthy Itachi, several times more powerful than the version of Kakashi who fought him in the Akatsuki suppression arc, Itachi would deliver the final blow to Kakazu, stating that unlike Hashirama Senju, he would be the one to finish the job. Leaving Kakazu's lifeless body, Itachi would have no choice but to go into hiding, knowing now for certain that the Akatsuki, and most importantly, Madaru Chiha were on to him. No place would be safe for him. He couldn't hide anywhere. He couldn't return to Konoha right away because the moment he did so, he'd be faced into a situation where he would have to battle Konoha Ninja and hope to get the attention of the third Hokage and then there was the matter of not trusting Danzo. Returning to Konoha would further put Sasuke's life in danger. His pact with Obito would be broken, meaning that Sasuke could be fair game and Sasuke's well-being would mean more to him than anything else. Returning to Konoha would also bring up many questions both he and the village elders couldn't afford to have answered, with the biggest one being the Uchiha massacre itself. Instead, Itachi would have to trust in the third Hokage to protect Sasuke, and Itachi would play his best card available to him, Jiraiya the Toad Sage. Itachi would make it a point to hunt down Jiraiya with the intention of using him to speak indirectly with the third Hokage and to gain a potential ally in taking down the Akatsuki. However, Obito would be one step ahead of Itachi, knowing that Itachi would likely seek contact with Konoha in the most discreet way in order to protect the village and by extension to protect Sasuke. Obito would take stock of how the Akatsuki is now and know that the remaining members outside of Pain couldn't hope to stand a chance against Itachi, who would be more dangerous now more than ever since he was being backed into a corner and Itachi knew that he was being hunted. Obito would use Zetsu to hunt down Itachi's location, using Zetsu's ability to move through the earth unnoticed, and once his location was found, Obito would send the six paths of Pain and Konan to take down Itachi because of how valuable valuable Nagato was to him since Obito needed Nagato alive in order to force him to revive Madara by making him give his life using the Rini Rebirth Jutsu. Obito would watch the battle unfold from a safe distance just as he did during the Sasuke vs Danzo fight with Obito only planning to step in when things looked their bleakest. Itachi being caught off guards by the six paths of pain as well as Konan would at first lead to a severe disadvantage. If this were a one-on-one -on -one fight he'd easily make work out of Conan and the individual paths. However, with them fighting all at once, Itachi would quickly be pressured at first. The longer the battle drags out, however, Itachi would begin to break down each of the individual paths powers and Itachi at some point would begin trying to use Genjutsu on one of the paths which would pay fruit in this battle. If Conan wasn't killed off by Itachi, then Itachi would be forced to break the Jutsu at some point. The animal path being able to summon multiple 
multiple summons from rhinos to birds to drilled beaks to giant dogs and do so all at once simultaneously would provide to be quite a problem for Itachi, on top of having to fight all the other six paths. Since Pain wouldn't be fighting in the Hidden Rain Village, he would be able to use his most powerful jutsu, something he couldn't do when he was fighting against Jiraiya because if he would have done so, then he would have ended up destroying the Hidden Rain Village. Given Jiraiya, without any intel, was able to take down some of the paths of Pain, I could see Itachi doing extremely well until the Naraka path repairs the damage done to the pains that Itachi took down. If at any point Pain decides to use the Chibaku Tensei, then Itachi could be in trouble. While he did break down the mechanics of the Jutsu rather quickly when he was in Edo Tensei, you have to look at it from this perspective. Given the surprise nature of this battle, I could see Itachi being forced into a situation where he attempts to use Tsukiyomi on the Diva path, which could do serious damage. However, given Obito would likely inform Nagato of how Itachi's Genjutsu works, in particular the Mangekyo Sharingan Genjutsu, I could see the paths being used in a way where the animal path keeps track of the battle from above or is hidden inside of the chameleon summoning which allows it to be hidden from plain sight and the other paths have their eyes closed as they're fighting. This in theory could lead to Itachi being pressured long enough for the Chibaku Tensei to be performed and be done so in a way that he can't counter as quickly as he needs to. If this does happen, then Itachi would be crushed to death. If Itachi wins, which is crazy as it might sound to some of you guys, a healthy Itachi stands a very decent chance fighting the six paths of pain and winning just off the fact that he's stronger than Jiraiya was even in Sage mode and he's more intelligent than Jiraiya. If Itachi wins, then Obito would likely step in and under no circumstances is Itachi defeating Obito in any type of battle. This would mean that Itachi would be killed off, which has major implications for the story going forward. So part one of what if Itachi was caught as an Akatsuki spy is done and over. And if you guys want to see part two, if we can get to 1000 likes, I will have that video out in less than a week. I literally have almost all of the video done. It's roughly 75%. So if you guys can hit 1000 likes, then I'll have that video out at the bare minimum one week from today. But as a bit of a teaser to you guys, I'm going to tell you this much. If you're a fan of Sasuke Uchiha, there are so many epic moments for Sasuke coming forward that it's absolutely going to turn some of you Sasuke fans into absolute fangirls. I'm talking Eno and Sakura from part one level fangirls. But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Have an awesome day, guys.